Hello everybody, I'm the Outback Owl, welcome back to Lucid 9. I'm Hot for Justice. I'm Yin and Young. I'm keeping you. And I'm Envy Jitters. And somehow we're in the clear from having alcohol on school pro property. Ooh. What is going on? Sorry. That's not the right button. She stepped back from the bush. Surprisingly, it's empty. There's no sign of Wanda, nor the alcohol. Did she finally understand what I meant, or is she just taking it to a more terrifying purpose? Like what? I don't know, man. <laughs> the teacher suddenly whips to me, her eyes narrowed. Well, I apologize for suspecting you without any basis. She sounds about as apologetic as a toddler in a tantrum. <laughs> if you happen to find those irresponsible students who are in the possession of alcohol, give them a little message for me. They can run, but they can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> then, just as abruptly as she entered, the teacher races from the rooftop, slamming the door behind her. Right. I only sink. To, I only sink to the ground, relishing the relief that washes through my veins. I live another day. What a ridiculous encounter! Yama. She's in the tree, isn't she? Probably. Mm-hmm. Yama. Yeah. Again, Wanda appears, as if from nowhere. This time, the alcohol is nowhere to be, to be seen. I understood. I put them back. <laughs> she practically bur She's practically bursting with pride. Well, for Wanda. Hesitantly, I pat her on the head. Mm. Thanks. She only nods placidly and continues to munch on her peach. <clears throat> Just curious, but uh, where did you get that stuff anyway? Mr. Ryota's office. Mm. The vodka and the sake. Cafeteria kitchens. Oh, I see. Wait a minute. What? You stole it from the cafeteria? What do you think I keep getting peaches? They weren't using it. <laughs> well, that's... It, it's still... It's still the schools. It's illegal for minors to drink, and it's illegal to steal, or is... or So it must be doubly illegal for minors to drink alcohol that's been stolen. Who would have ever think of taking the kitchen stock? The idea is either genius, insane, or both. Come to think of it, how does Wanda get her peaches? I swear that her stash is, inexhaust is inextinguishable. Every time I see her, she has a new peach. It couldn't be. Uh, Wanda, by any chance... <clears throat> no way. This is ridiculous. All of this is, is ridiculous. Joking about alcohol and almost getting expelled for it. Peaches. Endless peaches coming from nowhere. Mirth bubbles out of me in a wry laughter. Ridiculous. Brain damage, memory lapses, bus accidents, mutilated bodies, double-faced informants. Hurting Rui, hurting Masato, Mr. Ryota and Yahiko and Wanda as serial killers. My chuckles transform into an all-out hysterical fit. I struggle to keep breathing as my ribs ache beneath the instinct instinctually heave of my lungs. It's crazy. All of it. What's funny? My throat aches as I struggle to master myself. 
<laughs> life, <laughs> life is hilarious. And this is where he becomes the Joker. <laughs> Wanda inclines her head, quietly waiting. It's invitation enough. <laughs> Ever have that feeling where you feel like you know everything, but it just takes one moment and your whole world crumbles to pieces? Oh no, we really are turning into the Joker. Mm. Like La Rouge Lamparade. La Rouge Lamparade. Always La Rouge Lamparade. I'm being likened to a fictional character from a show. Sure, La Rouge Lamparade. He's a pretty cool guy, right? He kills people. <laughs> well, so do we. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a bit of a damper. I lace my fingers behind my head, staring into a nearby flower until my eyes begin to burn. I'm probably not any better. Rui and I got into an argument yesterday, and uh, I was an idiot. So, you're single? <laughs> I don't know what came over me. The kind of things I was saying, I'd never thought them. Not genuinely. We haven't fought like that, well, ever. Is that what death does? Makes you become a completely different person? She seemed fine, normal. I thought she'd be okay since she didn't see it. Wanda considers this for a moment before she speaks. Every word is enunciated deliberately. Perhaps she had problems. Problems she did not want to worry you with. My parents were the same. Oh. Your parents? They died. Oh. I feel the urge to say that I'm sorry, but it sounds shallow in the gravity of the moment. I see. Wanda only nibbles at her peach. Uh, how? I don't realize how insensitive that question is until it's already out of my mouth. Thankfully, before Wanda can respond, the warning bell rings. I hurriedly get to my feet. Uh, I guess we gotta head back to class now. Hmm. <clears throat> Wanda silently stands next to me. They fought. Every word seems labored, like it's painful to utter them. They fought? How does that explain how they passed away? There is a strong part of me that wants her to continue, part of me that's curious about this enigma known as Wanda Hiragi, Hiraga, or Kovacs. <laughs> but I can't bring myself to do it. There's enough craziness going on. Finding out about Wanda's past might just make things worse. Hey, uh, you don't have to tell me. It, it's fine. I move to the rooftop door, keen on exiting before I cause any more trouble. It's better this way. My curiosity just leads to hurting people anyway. Wanda silently follows me, staring at the peach cupped in her hands. We part at the stairway. I'm not sure what to say, but at the very least, she doesn't seem angry at me. Just thoughtful. I expected to spend the remainder of my time by myself, but instead I find Masaki waiting by my chair. Uh, hi. Do you want to go somewhere with me? I thought we had to go to class. <laughs> what? Yeah. Now? No, tomorrow. Of course, right now. Now I Class is about to start. She's 
right. Normally I wouldn't mind. So, uh, you're saying we're gonna ditch? I prefer the phrase, investing our time in other endeavors. Wink. So... So, ditching. You make it sound so ugly. As sudden as this may be, it might actually end up being kind of fun. Honestly, for once, I actually want to stay in school. It's nice to talk to Miki, but as stupid as it seems, this is the only semblance of normalcy I have. Sorry, uh, maybe after school? <laughs> oh, after school? I'm a bit busy with work. Oh. Uh. It's fine. Maybe some other time. I feel like I should try to make amends somehow, but the bell's already rung. Misaki returns to her desk, reabsorbed in her phone. The teacher promptly enters the classroom and wraps his knuckles against the board. I think we're at that point where, like, we've kind of cut off certain route options. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Teacher. Hi. Afternoon class, it's unfortunate that your P.E. is right after lunch, but it can't be helped to the courtyard. We're going to P.E.? Yes. The students groan, but follow him out the doors. We spend the period running along the track and doing basic conditioning. I end up pushing myself much harder than usual. The P.E. teacher, clearly unnerved, doesn't speak with me for the rest of this class. The afternoon passes by in a similar fashion, stagnant and ridden with idle gossip. It's not until I'm out of school that I realize I haven't seen Yahiko again. I don't have anyone to hang out with, so I leave straight after class. It's still light out by the time I return. The day stretches ahead of me, full of possibilities that, that don't actually exist. I could study, if there was any point in doing so. I could hang out with my friends, if I hadn't already screwed them over somehow. I should just talk to them, honestly, and apologize. At the very least, hear their side of the story. Try to understand what exactly is going on in their minds. And yet, I don't. Even I'm not completely sure why. The only clue lies in this nagging thought in the back of my mind. Maybe it's better that they don't know you. Maybe it's better if they don't have to blow off classes in order to find vague clues for any, an even vaguer case. Maybe it's better if they weren't forced to deal with someone depressed some depressed kid who never got over his sister's death. Maybe their lives would be easier. If that's the case, the only thing I can do for anyone, really, is to solve this case. Solve this case and stay out of the way. The key lies in my lapse. Everything could change depending on what I saw last night. You're a coward. We'll see about that. I need to know why that exchange took place and what it meant. I break out my train of I break out of my train of thought, pondering my next course of action. If the doctors can be trusted, all I need is a stronger trigger, something that can give my brain a nice kick. Like a bloodied corpse. Right. Easy. I raise my phone, hand shaking, nausea churns in my stomach as I bring up my browser search engine, switching the mode to images. I can do this. For Rui, for Masato, Yahiko, Mr. Ryota, Shigure, for the people who've died. For Mizu. I tap the screen with finality. 
gruesome scenery floods my pupils, pulsing into my brain like black oil. It wraps around me, strangling my breath out of my strangling my breath out of my lungs, laughing softly in my eyes. Too late. I struggle against it, but the empty eyes, the wash of organs and veins, it sends my head reeling. I vaguely feel myself turn over, retching. A lapse pushes at me, but I push back, reaching into the furthest depths of my mind. Remember. 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 You can do it. A clear, high voice pierces through the haziness of my mind. That was not a high voice. What? I know you can do it. I'm dumped into the yard of some primary school where there's grass and trees and no towering monolith of skyscrapers. It's most definitely a suburb. I'm sitting on a swing, and a tiny girl with legs that don't even reach the ground is on the swing next to me. She's a brave one. With, a, with every extension of her legs, she pushes higher and higher until she's almost horizontal with the bars. Then I realize that I'm also tiny, and my own legs don't reach the ground. Ah, this day. I remember it well. I remember it to the point of painstaking detail. I remember how the sun felt on my face, how the, t how the flowers sang in the wind, how the delightful shrieks of children were a soundtrack that played endlessly in the background. I remember despising it all because no one should have been happy. Not even I had... Not when I had to move. Not when adults kept saying things I didn't understand. Not when Mizu was gone. So when they come, just tell them, okay? The girl's cheery voice broke me out of my thoughts. I think that might actually be you. Who is this supposed to be? I think it's probably, uh, Rui. The girl's cheery voice broke me out of my thoughts. I was barely swaying back and forth on the swings, a comical juxtaposition to her vivid enthusiasm. Okay. It was not okay. It was not, I was not okay. And I would not just tell him. But as a child, I had very quickly learned that saying okay was the easiest thing to do. See, I wasn't sure if it was Rui or the sister. No, sister's dead. Saying okay this made people... Past? Yeah, but this is right after he moved, after oh, the sister that's died. that's true, yeah, yeah. Saying okay made people happy. Saying okay made people leave you alone. But this girl was an exception. As she swung down, she suddenly ground her heels into the bark, mulch beneath her feet. Wood chips sprayed at me. I promptly leapt to my feet, yelping in indignation. Hey. The girl jumped from her swing, landing in front of me. When she stood up, her hair seemed to glow like fire in the sunlight. Promise? I flicked bits of bark out of off my elementary school uniform, nodding dully. Okay. Pinky promise? She stuck out a hand. I shoved mine in my pockets. Okay. You aren't pinky promising. Cross my heart. Hope to die. I didn't speak because I suddenly felt funny. The girl's eyes widened. Oh, maybe we shouldn't hope to die. Your sister is already dead. Wow, Rui. Wow. <laughs> I, I went there. <laughs> She said this solemnly, and as a seven-year-old, I had absolutely no concept of political correctness, so I only shrugged. Yeah. It's okay. There's lots of trampolines in heaven. Trampolines and flowers. Okay. And the girl, through with saying her piece, slipped back onto their swing and continued her crazy quest to the top. I only made shapes in the bark mulch with the tip of my shoe. Suddenly, 
The girl haunched her knees to her chest, pointing, pointed frantically in the distance. Hey! Hey, they're coming! Hey! I shrank against the swing. I didn't need to look where she was, pointing. I already knew what lay in that direction. Come on, Yama, get up! No. You promised. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You just promised. No, I... Hey, you poop head, and we'll have to see who said poop head next time. <laughs> I s or now, I stiffen and glance meekly at the newcomer. Sorry. Four older children, bigger in every dimension, with glittering eyes and smiles that were far too cheery for this time of day, or any time of day, for that matter. Oh, dear. <laughs> we're about to get bullied hard. Yep. Yeah. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and feel free to check out some of our other gaming videos, our weekly podcast, Anime Yay or Nay, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!